What's good, Josh Boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 worst WWE championship matches of all time. Now, this should be a very interesting one, only because when you think of WWE championship matches, you're thinking of greatness, you're thinking of a good feud, good storyline that culminates in a, a great match. Sometimes the feud could be good, sometimes the storyline could be good, and then we get to the actual match. And it is awful. And you would think the WWE Championship match should never be, uh, you know, in a situation where the match is awful. But sometimes it happens that way. It just it just does not land. The match is just, it's not hidden, even if it is for the, the highest prize in the company, the WWE Championship. So we're going to check out some of the moments where the match, the match was just just not there man but i appreciate all the love and support you guys on the channel man and uh let's get right into this one bro wwe championship the cummerbund with the most abund the jewel in wwe's tiara the air quotes most prestigious championship in the history of air quotes sports entertainment no matter which design you favor be it the winged eagle the big eagle or any of the gaudy bollocks post 2005 the top title in the company is always <laughs> a point of wwe's pay-per-view booking unless the belt is held by cm punk aj styles kofi kingston jinder mahal or yeah. big e then it's just on in the middle of the card somewhere don't worry about it yeah. considering that it's a Apparently the belt that entire generations of wrestlers have entered the business to someday win. There have been a lot of treasured memories and matches surrounding the title, but on the flip side of that coin, there have been some all-time full Duke stinkers. Next yeah. week, we'll cleanse your palate with the best. But this week, I'm Adam Hailing from Parts Fun Known, and here are the 10 worst WWE Championship matches of all time. Yeesh. Number 10, Hulk Hogan versus Sergeant Slaughter, WrestleMania 7. All things being tallied, Hulk Hogan has probably had more bad matches than good ones and that ratio extends to the wwe championship bouts he had from manias 2 through 9. however as slow plodding cartoonish and untechnical all the hulks matches tended to be they also skated on by on crowd enthusiasm alone turns out in pro wrestling you don't need moves if you have the crowd eating out of your hand well mm -hmm. even the crowd couldn't save this flag tinged turd in order to gain <laughs> maximum heat which is my wrestling name wwe used the gulf war to turn their us versus themometer up to 11 by booking mr America Hulk Hogan versus a big bad Iraqi. Unfortunately, the only Iraqis they could find were General Adnan, who was deeply middle-aged at the time, Colonel Mustafa, who wasn't Iraqi but who's counting, and Sergeant Slaughter, <laughs> who was the Hovis best of both. Sarge, who'd never wrestled above the mid-card, was given the top belt and tasked with main eventing WrestleMania 7 against the Hulkster, and even Hogan bleeding couldn't make this match exciting. A tired Damn. match featuring tired men working a tired story. Probably Jeez. the first major match to make people realized that Hulkamania was on the wane in the 1990s. Number mm. 9, John Cena versus The Miz, WrestleMania 27. <laughs> and speaking of ridiculously brightly colored supermen who had a strange relationship with losing, it's John Cena. From 2005 to 2011, John Cena was the scourge of the WWE title scene, <laughs> forever changing the classic undisputed design into a spinning nightmare for jazzled with the word champ, you know, just like all the spirits of the garden would want. Still, at least he had some <laughs> classic matches for his awful belt versus Umaga versus HBK versus mm -hmm. Edge, not versus The Miz, though very much not versus The Miz. The main <laughs> event to WrestleMania 27 is talked about a lot, seeing as it's a particularly lumpy bollocks out atop a taint Sunday. It's got all the major hallmarks of being bad. The crowd didn't particularly care about either man winning. Overbook restart bollocks. Outside interference from a laptop. The three yeah. major food groups of Shart. The Miz defending a title that no one wanted him to have against a man who no one wanted to win it. Presided over by a general manager no one liked all to set up a match that wouldn't be seen for a fucking year yeah i ain't gonna lie to you bro that laptop era of wwe the general manager operating through the laptop was cringe <laughs> i used to hate that shit bro i was just like oh my god get this on my screen Off. number eight the big show versus the big boss man armageddon 1999 oh it's the battle of the big boys bloody hell none of the big shows runs with the wwe championship have ever gone well he's had two <laughs> wwe <laughs> title funny. race the second in 2002 <laughs> ended after one month the first in 1999 ended checks notes one and a half months later Jeez. in fact the big show has only successfully defended the WWE Championship on 
on pay-per-view Jeez. Armageddon 1999 against the big boss man of all people in three minutes to almost total silence the big show chokeslams Albert through the announce table no one cares the big show kips up no one cares the match doesn't go longer than three minutes but still manages to get a boring chant in there wow. bloody hell tall oh. Paul that's weapons grade apathy right there for folks asking why no one cared well I mean it was the big boss man and also it was a feud where he made fun of big show's daddy yeah. for being dead so it's about as personal as you could get and not yeah that shit was kind of like, I was like okay I was like whoa they... <laughs> when you look back at it it was like they they really put that on television bro like that was that was a real thing and not one single person at Armageddon gave a bastard's ass. Number seven, John Cena versus Randy Orton, Unforgiven 2007. And speaking of daddy, step right up, John Cena Senior. John Cena, so it's on Senior, Senior, <laughs> Senior. John Cena was feuding with Randy Orton in 2007, which was back before the very mention of those two names in the same sentence made fans' faces melt like the Ark of the mm-hmm. Covenant. In the build of this match, Randy kicked John Cena's father in the head, which, shall we say, rustled big match John's big match Jimmy's. A super person. Personal, super heated build their match at Unforgiven then, which had a minute long rest hold in it and then ended after seven minutes total because John Cena refused to stop punching Orton in the corner. <laughs> yeah, it's the worst f- finish the WWE have in their playbook. Luke Owen's biggest wrestling pet peeve, which he described as wrestlers being disqualified for kicking too much ass. It was before the network, <laughs> that finish cost you 50 fing dollars. Pay up, dumbass. The f- it, it is the thing. I like the feud. I like the feud. But it definitely should have been like you you had to ramp it up. It should have been a situation where if you're going to go that route and have him purposely get disqualified, which would make sense, then you need to change the stipulation or something to add that extra bit of drama. They could have went with it. If you get disqualified, you Randy Orton still becomes champion. They could have went that route. You can't go wrong with that because now John has to control his rage. And really focus in and Randy can pick his spots. Or you can go with a no holds barred. You want a no holds barred because it's not going to be a match. You're going to try to end his career. Something like that. They, they could have did that, but they went the cheap route. I'm like, yep, we're going to go ahead and have this match end. He still retains and then Randy Orton still gets beat up. So I can get why some people, especially if you paid for the pay-per-view at the time, get real pissed off. But I definitely did enjoy the the lead up to the to their match. Fans in attendance agreed with Luke showering the finish with booze up until the post match angle where Big Dad John kicked Randy in the head, all to build to a last man standing match that didn't happen because John Cena got injured. Number yeah. six, Randy Orton versus Bray Wyatt WrestleMania uh, 33, the match that made me plumpy and f- it very much for doing so. Always fun when you're wrestling a match and everyone starts openly pointing their fingers and laughing at it. And trust me, I wrestled a match where my trousers were ripped off and thrown on Jim Cornette and. I was significantly less embarrassed than Bray should have been here. Poor yeah. Bray's had so many humiliations in his career, wrestling in Pop World at the Royal Rumble this year, being beaten by old man Goldberg in Saudi Arabia, being distracted to death by Get Your Own Back Alexa Bliss at Mania 37. But perhaps the most embarrassing moment for BigBray.com is this, going into his first pay-per-view defense of the mm-hmm. WWE title at WrestleMania 33, using his magical powers to make the National Geographic channel appear on the ring canvas, doing it so often that the crowd... That shit was weird. It didn't work. <clears throat> I'm sure they was trying something different, but it just kept it simple, bro. Adding a fucking visual of some fucking roaches on a display, like, it it didn't work, bro. When I saw that, I was like, oh, well, GG's, man. This, is, this match is fucking done. Crowd began to loudly mock it before being hit with a single RKO and pinned in 10 minutes. Bray Wyatt has wrestled in some truly stupid places. A haunted house, John Cena's mind, but inside yeah. the old man's f-ing tackle box is probably the worst. Number five, all the Jinder matches. <laughs> here I go, Hinder. Gotta again. put them I don't in there. We're still hot taking the Jinder Mahal wrestling four identically boring pay per view matches and one boring Punjabi prison match for the oh WWE my Championship God, was bro. good, actually. But hey, at least Shinsuke Nakamura was super dead damage that it didn't change business in India at all. It's fucking great stuff. It may seem like a cheat to count all of Jinder's WWE title matches as one, but honestly, apart from the Punjabi prison one, they're all the fucking same. <laughs> Punch, kick, dull moves, because Jinder never learned any good ones, because why would he use a jobber? Singh Brothers interference, yep. alas, end of match. Backlash, yeah. Money in the Bank, SummerSlam, Hell in a Cell, they're all the fucking same, and they're all so fucking bad.
boring. <laughs> Ideologically and narratively, I don't have anything against a jobber becoming WWE champion. You can tell an interesting story out of that. WWE chose not to do that, though, instead just pretending that Jinder was a main eventer all along. Yeah. Turned him a bit racist. And then he wrestled sh matches for half a year that made us all dread the WWE title match on a pay-per-view. I don't care how different it was. That is not a good thing. No. Number four, Facts. Brock Lesnar squashes. Just to prove I'm not bagging on Jinder because it's fun to beat up on the jobber, let's bag on one of my favorite wrestlers ever, Brock Lesnar, the patron saint of Vince saying, ah, f*** it. Brock yep. had many <laughs> very good matches in the last 10 years, but during his run with the WWE Championship leading up to Mania 36, which was planned to be Brock's final run with the company, just BT Dub, he had three absolutely awful, meaningless at best, damaging at worst, squash matches for that strap. Uh. Against Kofi Kingston in October on SmackDown when he won the thing, annihilating Kofi standing as a main eventer with a single move. One against Kane Velasquez, yep. a deeply two minute match that did nothing except get Brock his win back from UFC 121 and exacerbating how not worth it was to beat Kofi for the title that way. And Facts. finally, a 90 second match against Ricochet at Super Showdown 2020 where Ricochet didn't hit a single f***ing move against Brock. The awful matches, all three of them, each one rendering their opponent a complete joke Pointless. and unworthy of fighting for the title ever again and none of them have. Number three, Pointless. Diesel versus King Mabel SummerSlam 95. Big Daddy Cool Diesel has often been described as the worst Worst WWE champion of all time because he was figurehead of the company when it went through its worst ever business period, prompting WCW officials to quip that WWE was running on diesel power. Fnaf, fnaf. That's a bit unfair because business was in the toilet all over in 1995 and WCW certainly wasn't doing much better, and that's with Hulk Hogan on top. However, crap credit where it's crap due, Diesel was part of not only one of the worst WWE championship matches ever, but one of the worst SummerSlam main events ever, Diesel versus King Mabel at SummerSlam 95, one of the worst SummerSlams of all time just by the way. Hooray, I got to watch it again in a desperate attempt to fill the hole left in his roster by the departure of all the dudes who took the roids and all the people that WCW was stealing away. Vince found the tallest guy he could find, Diesel, and mm -hmm. the heaviest guy he could find, Mabel, mm -hmm. and he just sort of rubbed them against each other in a match. That'll do, right? It won't do, though. Mm -mm. Won't do at all. This match sucks. It is an absolute 20-minute slog that also somehow manages to be only nine minutes long. Explain that. <laughs> Damn. Walking. Nothing punches, nothing kicks, total audience disinterest broken up only by Mabel injuring Diesel by sitting on him, leading to Kevin Nash shouting F repeatedly at the top of his voice. Damn. Yeah, same, Kev. Same. Number two, Triple H versus Roman Reigns, Ooh. WrestleMania 32. Ooh. When I die, I am going to hell, and my personal hell will be being forced to both watch <laughs> and then write <laughs> list entries about this f match for the rest of eternity. I should be able to watch it about three times all the way through. How dare this match for oh a number my gosh. of reasons. How dare this match be half an hour long? How dare this match be a This match was not it. I I don't even think did I watch this all the way through? I think I may have. It was not it though. This was just it 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 wasn't it, bro. No one cared about Roman at this time. They were trying to make him this ultimate baby face. No, no one cared. No one cared. I think, honestly, this was the year, was it that pay-per-view roadblock, if I'm not mistaken, where it was Dean Ambrose versus uh, Triple H? I want to say, cause, yeah, I want to say that's what it was. It was Dean Ambrose versus Triple H before this pay-per-view. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think they should have pulled an audible. The crowd was really hot for Dean Ambrose. Should have been Dean Ambrose winning the match. And then you could have Dean Ambrose versus Roman Reigns, two out of the three members of the Shield. And everyone would have been pro Dean Ambrose. Could have had Dean Ambrose. I know it would have him being a transitional champion would have sucked, but you could have had Dean Ambrose lose and have a Roman Reigns win it. But him turning heel would have been probably a better, a better send-off. Some, you know, that they had options. I wouldn't say that's what uh, ended up like that was the road to WrestleMania that year. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that's what happened. I could be wrong there. At the end of a six hour show, including pre show, how dare this match not involve Dean Ambrose in any way? How dare this match politely tell us to shut up and eat our yummy Roman? Yeah, there we go. It makes sense. Oh, yeah, that was that same year he ended up feuding with Brock, which was pointless too. 
Reigns as WWE Champion Gruel suffering succotash down the hatch. 27 minutes this match is with one f***ing pop in the whole thing when Steph gets speared. One yeah. pop in 27 minutes. Absolute torture. Why wouldn't it stop? Why wouldn't someone stop it? We tried to stop it. We tried our best, but it couldn't be stopped. The Roman's reign couldn't be stopped. Thank uh. goodness no one feels like that anymore, though, eh? <laughs> it's a joke because he, yeah, he also won't lose now. <laughs> <laughs> he said it could be also won't lose. He's not losing any times. <laughs> okay, and number one, Big Show versus Randy Orton Survivor Series 2013. If a tree falls in a forest and no one is around to hear it, does it make a sound? Huh. Yes. If the Big Show wrestles Randy Orton after trying to nick the f***ing yes chant off of Daniel Bryan and no one cares about slow-ass heel Orton and main event Big Show in 2013 and it's a horrible, think, heatless nightmare and 13,000 people are around to see it, do Fake they make a sound? No. I don't precisely know why I rank this at number one. There's probably worse matches, but everything about it is either intensely annoying or achingly dull. The fact that Daniel Bryan had just been demoted after his feud with Orton. The fact oh, this match came yeah. after another sh WWE title match at Battleground that ended in a no contest because of the goddamn big show. This guy ruined the main event of the last show and was mm -hmm. rewarded with the main event of the next show. The lame authority banned from ringside but still getting involved finished. The fact that no one cares. Genuinely, I can't remember the last time I've seen a crowd this quiet for a main event WWE Championship match well since Armageddon 1999 <laughs> to be honest stop doing this with the big show nothing in this match worked not even Orton's punt at the end which you could see daylight through it. God, the only major reaction this match got was John Cena coming out at the end. The only person who got a pop mm -hmm. in this match was a person who wasn't f***ing in it. This match was so bad that people would begrudgingly accept yet another Cena Orton stare down yeah. and because it makes them feel something. I'd call it a wet fart of a match, but even wet farts make noise. And that's our list. What's your least favorite? Hey, man, this was a good list. Gotta go ahead and give this a like because, yeah, that I forgot he was even in that main event because at that point then they kind of they tried they really did try to go away from the the whole daniel bryan situation but it didn't work people people knew who they wanted to see so they they tried to once he lost at SummerSlam, well he won it and then lost it in the cash in they were trying to put him back down the card and it wasn't gonna work bro people wanted to see daniel bryan Big Show being involved. Fuck no. Get him off my screen. <laughs> no disrespect to the Big Show, man. But at that time, no. Get him off my screen, bro. Get one of you here. Oh, man. Hey, but this was a great video. <clears throat> Once again, definitely go check it out. Uh, check out their channel. All parts fun. No link to the original video will be down below. If you want to uh, subscribe to him because I have been subscribed to him for quite some time, man. But comment down below. Let me know what are some of the worst wwe championship matches if they weren't on this list that you can think of man let me know down below but i appreciate all the love and support you guys showing on channel road to 150k and i'm still the youtube wrestling champion world appreciate y'all kicking me see y'all next one peace